just how worried do Badger fans need to be for this Washington State game? What has changed about them? And who is the better quarterback, Cameron Ward or Tanner uh, Mordecai? Let's talk about it on today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Lockdown Badgers. I'm your host, Ryan Harris. As always, we're going to get right into it. This is a game we've had circled for a long time. It's one, if you've been watching the show, if you're an everydayer, you know I've picked against Wisconsin in this one. We're going to dive into it. we got Greg Woods joining the show, uh, beat writer for the team, Washington State, uh, right over the Spokesman Review. Greg, thank you so much for joining the show, man. How excited are we for this weekend? Man, I'm beyond excited. I, uh, you know, after reading about the way they upset them in Madison last year and Getting uh, round two with Pullman this year. I think, uh, yeah, man, I think everybody in Pullman is super pumped for this, and uh, me included. So it's, 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 it's going to be great. I actually want to start there. So I want to get into <laughs> offense, defense, key players, changes in the offseason. But I actually want to start at a bit of a different storyline. Obviously, uh, so much has been made of conference realignment. Uh, Washington State, along with Oregon State, getting a little maybe left behind with the back 12. Is there a bit of a vibe with this team seeing a Big Ten team come in? after seeing maybe the Big Ten take some of the members of the Pac-12? Um, I don't know if it's so much as, like, you know, they want to get back at the Big Ten for um, for taking Oregon and uh, Washington. I think it's more just like, I mean, for for Wazoo, it's like their first time – I want to get this right. So it's the first time hosting a Power 5 non-conference game in, like, 25 years. And I don't even know who it was 25 years ago. Like, it's been, that's, like that's as long as I've been alive. So it's like – it's it's a really special thing. I mean, it's a primetime deal on on ABC um, against a ranked opponent like Wisconsin. So I think I think it has a lot to do with just like of with the Big Ten being in some ways you know responsible for the collapse of the, of the Pac-12. It, I think it's more just like, hey, this is an opportunity that's not come along very often at all, and that's uh, I think that's more what's kind of driving the uh, excitement around this one, as far as you know, Wazoo is concerned. And then talk, talk to me about um, what is that environment going to be like? You mentioned uh, first time hosting a, a Power 5 out of conference team in 25 years. It's going to be a night. I mean, it's going to be a primetime game. What is yeah. that atmosphere going to be like? Uh, how packed are the stands going to be? How electric is it going to be? Well, I mean, as sold out as games can be, I don't think games are ever really sold out because you can always go on like Seat Geek and stuff up. But but they're, but they're calling it a sellout, and I think that's going to be pretty, you know, pretty darn close. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I think people. Um, I mean, heck, I mean, I'm I'm having my buddy who's a Wisconsin uh, guy come and like crash my place this weekend. He's he's coming over from Missoula. So <laughs> to people, I don't know how many Wisconsin fans are going to be there, but there will be at least uh, two. So um, so that'll be fun. Yeah, man, it's it's going to be packed. It's going to be prime time, like you said. Um, yeah, I don't think I can say enough about just like the excitement around this one for sure. Uh, let's get into Washington State. Let's talk offense. Obviously, Badger fans know all about Cam Ward. They know about Nikia Watson being a uh, former Wisconsin guy. Who else do we need to look out for offensively? So they have a bunch of new receivers. They're only returning, well, at least guy that plays a bunch, is uh, Lincoln Victor at the uh, receiver spot. He's coming off a huge game against uh, Colorado State. I want to say – I might get this a little bit wrong, but I want to say he had 11 catches for like 168 yards um, uh, the other day down in Fort Collins. So he is their uh, number one or uh, wide receiver. But outside of him, they have these like four uh, transfer guys that have made huge impacts, or at least three that have made huge uh, impacts. So uh, D.T. Sheffield came from uh, Northwest Missouri uh, Juco. I'm sorry, Mississippi, not not Missouri. Uh, and then um, Isaiah Hamilton came from San Jose State, Kyle Williams from UNLV, and then Josh Kelly from uh, Fresno State. And so those are the guys that, if you're looking for you know kind of names to watch at the skill positions, those are the guys. Because I mean, <laughs> Wazoo is an air raid team. Everybody knows they're going to th- they threw it freaking 50 times the other day against Colorado State. Um, so they're going to air it out. They uh, are not coy about that at all. Um, I mean, I mean, if it wasn't for the game being out of reach, I mean, Cam Moore would have threw it. I mean, I don't know how many more times. He was already at like 49. So, yeah, so between Cam Ward and Nakia Watson, D.T. Sheffield, Kyle Williams, Josh Kelly, uh, you know, Lincoln Victor, like I said, I mean, I mean, just the list goes on because these guys just want to throw the freaking ball um, and they're going to. So, so yeah, man, those are the guys to watch out for, for sure. 
Uh, talk to me about the offensive coordinator, uh, Ben Arbuckle, new offensive coordinator. He's 27? 27. 27. Yeah. <laughs> How is that possible? But um, obviously a very pass-heavy guy. What, what's the little different about Ben Arbuckle? Well, you said it. He's 27, which is like not even <laughs> youngest. Yeah, so youngest power uh, power five coordinator in the country. I'm sure by a long shot. I don't. I mean, I, I'm not sure the exact uh, numbers on those. But yeah, man, he uh, you know classic kind of air raid guy. But I think as far as Wazoo is concerned, what's different about his offense is that he loves to use the tight ends. Which, if you know anything about Washington State offense, is that for the longest time. Mike Leeds did not use the tight ends of the offense like at all. <laughs> so last year, actually, he was in the Wisconsin game last year. Uh, a, a Wazoo tight end, Billy, Billy, I'm not Riviere, I want to say is how it's pronounced. He caught a pass at, at, as a tight end, and that was the first WSU tight end to catch a pass. And like at the time, it was like in like 11 years, something like to- totally unreal. Um, so that is like the biggest. Um, as far as like personnel difference in this year's offense, like so guys like Dilly Rivier are gonna be involved. Cooper Mathers is the uh, starting tight end, so you'll probably see him catch a few passes um out uh, you know out there from Camp Ward. And so I think it's like that's like the biggest difference. Um and then like you know, you just you just get him in space, you'll get get, get Cam Ward in space, he's gonna air it out to you know all those you know uh you know receivers that I just mentioned. So he uh you know, pretty pretty innovative guy. He uh I mean, I don't know how this this might not carry over, but um, last year, last year, last weekend against Colorado State, they tried these like weird, like two point conversion formations where they wouldn't like they were at, like they would act, they would act like they're going to line up to go for two, but like the kicker would like line up as a receiver, and so they would be like, oh no no, Ratch is going to kick it, so they would bring the kicker back out to <laughs> just kick the extra point. So and then they went for two a few, a few times too, and so I think there's just like a lot of kind of unknowns. You know, for because they, I mean, they're not going to show all their cards in week one against you know a Mountain West team. So, I think there's still a lot to to be seen as far as what uh, what Ben Arbuckle, Arbuckle will do with the offense. Um, but as far as what we can glean from week one, it's going to be a lot of passes, tight ends involved. I'm even, I mean, running backs are going to be involved too. Uh, Nikia Watson, actually, this is probably Kim Ward's best uh, pass of the night. It was just this. Uh, he was wide open. Uh, Watson was on this kind of wheel route, um, but Cam Ward just kind of dropped it in the bucket uh, for a touchdown to uh, Nikia Watson. So, yeah, I mean, everybody's kind of a threat to be involved in the offense for sure. Cam Ward is an interesting guy. I want to talk about him more after the break because Badger fans who watch the show will know I, I got some flack for for picking Tan, or Cam Ward over Tanner Mordecai. So we're going to talk about that coming up. I want one more name on offense that I wanted to ask you about. Essa Pohl, uh, the, the big left tackle, 6'7", 320 pounds, uh, former basketball guy. He seems like basically the the prototypical left tackle in college football. Yeah, he is a uh, a transfer guy, a JUCO transfer. Um, his uh, yeah, he he made his first uh, appearance in a uh, Wazoo uni- uh, uniform the other day, and yeah, man, he uh, they love him, dog. He is um, yeah, very pretty quick on his feet. The guy is huge. I did a story on him at the beginning of fall camp and, uh, you know, just one of those guys you stand next to and you're like, Oh my God. And like, I'm not like a short guy. And so I, I'm not like huge, but I'm not short. So I looked at it and I'm like, man, this is like, there is a reason why you're an offensive lineman for a Pac-12 team. So yeah, man, he's, he's great. And, um, yeah, that whole offensive line, I don't know how much you know about the offensive line there, but like they have him, they have a couple of new guys in there. So it's like, they're playing like seven offensive linemen, which is a, a pretty uh, new thing. I mean, you want to take the five, obviously. So, um, so just like because of injuries and whatnot, they've had to kind of shuffle some guys in, and um, and so I think they're hoping by Saturday they'll they won't have to go to seven. Um, but yeah, between Esapoe and uh, Maki Fafita and Connor Godness, and uh, I got to get this right, Faulini Faulini Faamo. He is a uh, Polynesian guy, and then. Um, Christian Kanu at the right tackle. So yeah, a lot of like new pieces on the offensive line, but yeah, Essa has been, uh, he's been pretty great for sure. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to dive into <laughs> Camp Ward, Tanner Mordecai. Also talk a little bit about just from the fans perspective, what it's like being a Washington state fan, seeing the, the realignment issues going on. We're going to talk about the next on lockdown badgers with Greg Woods. But first today's show is brought to you by our good friends over at eBay motors. I've talked about eBay motors a lot. It's a place I go to whenever I need any type of parts for my car. And there's been many times I've needed that. Uh, one of the stories I haven't really told a lot on this show is, uh, and I'll expound on it in a different episode, but 
I was running late one time for work and I didn't want to get yelled at. So I just got into a car accident on purpose. I hit a tree. Um, true story. And it got me out of getting in trouble at work. It kind of destroyed my Jeep in the process. I, I ran into a tree to create a car accident. But I, if I had eBay Motors, I could have used eBay Motors to go online and make sure I had the right parts and the right fit guaranteed. That's what you need to build a championship product. You don't want any hassles, any worries. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you just make sure every part fits right the first time. You just put your uh, your your car, your making model into my ride in my garage. Look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only, exclusions do apply. I do want to take a quick second to say thank you, everybody, for tuning in. As This, this has been an amazing start uh, to the season. I love the community we're continuing to build together. And I really do appreciate that. All right, let's get Greg back in. Let's talk Tanner Mordecai. Um, Greg, before the show, we, we chopped it up a little bit. I mentioned that I, I when we were, I was comparing Tanner Mordecai to Cameron Ward, I took Cameron Ward. What is so special about Cameron Ward and how good do you think he can be this year? Yeah, he has like all the talent in the world. I think with him, the biggest thing is just kind of like harnessing that. And because uh, like when... Uh, when Arbuckle came in, like one of the first things <clears throat> he me that he kind of emphasized to Cam is that like we got to work on your fundamentals, got to get a um, a more consistent and sharper drop back. There's like kind of little things like that because there's not much to really improve on with this game. I mean, the guy has an awesome arm, super athletic, um, and so I think like the more he kind of uh, kind of sharpens up like kind of the fundamentals and gets some of those worked out that he can be just awesome, awesome, awesome. I mean, he threw for freaking 451 yards the other day. <laughs> uh, and so, like, the, you know, there's no question about the talent, the arm talent, um, the athleticism. I mean, he was – I mean, it's not a good thing for them, but he was their leading rusher the other day uh, because of a, a few uh, long scrambles. And so I think, like, as he kind of puts it all together between the arm talent, um, the rushing ability, because I think there's one thing that they want to kind of push with him this year is just – um, he's, he's not a slow guy, but if, I think if he had it his way, he would kind of just like sit back there and kind of dice him up. And so I think as he uh, gets more comfortable running and scrambling and, uh, cause he has, I mean, he's, he's, you know, plenty athletic. So I think as he puts it all together, he can just be awesome, 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 awesome. Um, he did, uh, have, have a couple fumbles the other day against Colorado state one. Um, I'm not even sure. It's hard to even see on the replay what happened, but he kind of just lost it. Um, and then on the other one, it was just on him for losing that. He was kind of getting flushed out of the pocket. And so, like, if you can limit those and limit some of the interceptions, he didn't have a, he didn't have a bunch last year. Um, but as he, like I said, if he as he kind of sharpens up some of these small little, you know, kind of parts of his game, um, that he can he can really take this guy's part because he is, you know, like I said, super duper talented. Is is there a feel around the program that he took a jump from last year to this year? Uh, I mean, they sure hope so. <laughs> it's uh, it's super early, obviously, but you know, I mean, I he's, I think it was like thirty-seven to forty-nine passing for, like I said, four fifty-one and, and three touchdowns. So, um, I yeah, I it's hard to say because I mean, not only uh was a week one but it was against like a mountain west team that he didn't play the whole game against so um but yeah i mean i mean after watching him in that game watching him all through fall camp he uh he's he's looking great man i think like one thing that he um was kind of knocked on for him last year was his deep ball um i don't have all the numbers like right in front of me but i want to say pff had him as like one of the worst deep ball throwers um in the fbs and so and he missed a couple the other day i mean i think like on the first series of the game he um he had DT Sheffield like wide up and across the middle and just kind of overthrew him. Um, and then later in the game, he had uh, Riviere, the tight end open, like on a wide open um, pass in the end zone that kind of just overthrew mm -hmm. him. So, and that was less of a deep ball than him just kind of missing an easy throw. So I think like if he can get those down, if he can really like be a downfield threat to just, you know, find all these guys because he has I mean this receiver court is unreal and so I think like if he can really find some consistency and hitting those deep balls because they can't get open it's just a matter of him finding them and kind of hitting them in stride if he can really do that then I think that you you add that to the kind of the fundamentals I was talking about he's just going to be kind of a world beater so we'll see how that goes 
Let's let's talk defense a little bit then. Let's shift there. Um, and again, viewers of the show will know I think very highly of Cameron Ward. He, he frankly kind of terrifies me this weekend. Uh, let's shift to defense though. That'd be really good defense line. Badger fans <laughs> there from last year. Uh, Stone and coming back. There's there's a couple pieces there. How is the defense overall? Pretty good. Yeah. You, so you hit on the two big uh, pieces between Brendan Jackson and Ron Stone. Um, a little bit of a question mark on the interior of, of, the, of the defensive line. So they have uh, Nusi Milani and David Gusta are their other two uh, defensive linemen. They're not new to the, the team, but they're new as you know being full-time starters this year. Um, so those guys have been kind of, um, you know, you know, kind of coming along. Um, and then so they play 4-2-5. So the two linebackers are going to be, uh, Kyle Thornton and then uh, Devin Richardson. Um, Devin Richardson is kind of I just I I, I, uh, I did a story on him a little bit ago. So he started his career at uh, New Mexico State and then back to Texas and wasn't playing as much as he had wanted, wanted there. So he transferred up here uh, to Wazoo and then. Um, but what I really got to talk about is their secondary. So they have uh, so Jaden Hicks is uh, going to get drafted <laughs> uh, sooner than later. He had a uh, pick six the other day against Colorado State. Just read this pass. It was it was a pretty bad pass, but he read it perfectly and uh, you know took it the other way. Um, and then Shaw Smith Wade is their uh, best cornerback. He uh, he's awesome, kind of an undersized guy like a lot of their uh, you know secondary guys, but just an awesome, awesome, awesome cornerback. And then uh, other cornerback is uh, Cam Lampkin, who another guy that's kind of uh, pressed into a bigger role this year just because they had a couple guys graduate. And so um, kind of an undersized guy, but uh, not bad at all. And um, and then you look at guys like, uh, you know, Jackson Latawama. He had a pick the other day. Um, a few, like I said, a few new pieces in the secondary, but I think that might be the strength of his defense um, between Jaden Hicks and guys like I just mentioned. So, um, I think it all kind of we, 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 sorry, my dog is <laughs> walking around. No, a, I told you before, this is a dog friendly show, it's all for good. sure. So, I think like it all starts with their pass rush because I remember, I mean, between Brendan Jackson and Ron Stone, like if they can get pressure consistently, I mean, good luck. <laughs> so, I think like if that's going, then whoever the other team is, whether it's Wisconsin or Colorado State or whoever they have to change some things up because if they don't have time to sit back there and throw it, like it sounds like they want to, to some extent this year, then your offense is kind of looking at some other options. So I think with, with, with Wazoo, it also has with their pass rush. Um, and then it kind of just kind of goes on from there, but yeah, it all, it all kind of starts up front with them. Well, let me ask this. Cause so Wisconsin is definitely transitioning into an air raid long ago. Lots been made of it. However, they're still going to run the ball coming off 300 plus yards. <laughs> week one, uh, Braylon Allen, Ches Malusi. It's just kind of talking about the strength of your team being a secondary uh, four two five. How do you feel like they're going to stack up against the Badgers in that power running game? Because the Badgers are still going to run between the tackles. Yeah, and I think I mean I wasn't covering the game last year, um, but I think that was like one of the big reasons why they pulled off the upset in Madison last year was because they limited Allen to like not even a hundred yards, which for most guys is great, but for Brady, I mean, for for, for Braille and Allen, it was like you know something's going on here. So I think that's kind of where it started last year. But, you know, like you said, between now they added Ches Malusi. Am I saying his name right? Yep, perfect. You nailed it. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, between those two guys, I think that'll be a pretty big matchup, honestly. And that's not any any hot take. But um, you added, like I said, Kyle Thornton and then Devin Richardson, two guys who uh, – Thornton played a pretty decent amount. But this is his biggest role by far on the defense. And then, like I said, Richardson – uh, this is his uh, first year at WSU. So I think, like, outside of the pass rush and secondary, I think the biggest matchup here is going to be those two running backs, like you said, um, and then how well they can stop the run. Because, I mean, <laughs> you have 240-plus yard rushers. Um, sounds like a, you know, a pretty big part of their offense. And so I think how much they can limit those two guys, especially at the linebacker spot between Thornton and Richardson, is going to be pretty, pretty huge for sure. Let's let's go to um really quick finish up here with the kind of the team preview Washington State. Special teams play a huge role in close games. We all know that. How confident are you if Washington State has to line up and kick a game winning field goal from 43 yards? Well, so it's crazy you ask about that. So for the longest time, so Wazoo's kicker is Dean Janikowski. No relation to Sebastian Janikowski. Okay, I don't just that. Okay. <laughs> Everybody wonders that. And the answer is no relation. Um, so for the longest time, like he was looked at as like so they have him and then uh, Colton Thieker does their kickoff because he has a bigger leg. 
Uh, but Jalen Calhoun is, is, is more accurate, which is why he's the place kicker. So his longest, his career long was 50 up until last week when he hit like a 55 yarder uh, right before halftime. Uh, and so it seems like he's really expanded his range um, over the off season. And so I think that was huge for them because he's never, I mean, as far as I know, he's never been looked at as a guy that could hit from like 55, 60. Um, so if he can expand his range like he did the other day, that's going to be huge for them. Um, because, I mean, I we asked Jake Dickard about this after the game, like, you know, how much does that kind of change the calculus if you don't feel like you have to get to the end zone right before halftime? And he was like, yeah, it's huge. Because I don't think like, and that spot right before halftime the other day, they weren't really trying to score a touchdown as much as they were just trying to get in range for Dan Kowski. And so, um, yeah, I think he showed us something really big there in terms of just expanding his range, going from just kind of a guy that can be accurate on short to intermediate kicks to like now he can hit from 50, 55. So, yeah, I think that's huge for sure. Yeah, it's a huge weapon if you have that. Yeah. All right, we'll take one more quick break, come back, and just ping Greg on a good place for Badger fans to eat if you're visiting, uh, going to this game, and also just final thoughts on the Pac-12, kind of where that fan base is at. We're coming up next on Lockdown Badgers with Greg. But first, a quick thank you to everybody tuning in the show. Really do appreciate y'all. Um, and can't say enough for this community we're building. Thank you so, so much. All right, let's come back to Greg, finish off here, talking the big game coming up this weekend. Greg, I wanted to – to go to here, um, it, it's it's an awkward kind of a question, but what what is the vibe around the fan base? We talked a little bit about the team. Uh, obviously, they know what's happening, but the fans have been invested in Washington State in this program for decades, if not longer. What is their vibe seeing the Pac-12 kind of disintegrate? Um, I think it's a mixture of like sadness and anger um, because so like right up until um, like a few Fridays ago, like actually about a month ago. Um, it sounded like the the Pac-12 um, was going to agree on the new Apple deal that would keep the conference together. Um, and then at like the 11th hour, uh, you get Washington and Oregon pulling out and say, no, we're going to the Big Ten. Now, obviously, between Wazoo and Washington, that's a huge, huge, huge rivalry. And so like for them to be one of the people that, that pulls out and kind of forces the collapse of the Pac-12 – a lot of anger directed toward Washington for that. I mean, there was already a lot of anger but you know, toward UW anyway, but then you um, you look at what they did, um, and uh, there's definitely a lot of anger directed toward them. Um, so, yeah, definitely plenty of, like, anger in that way, but also, like, a lot of sadness, like I said, because, like, these guys have been in the Pac-12 or Pac-8, Pac-10, Pac-12 for as long as it's existed, um, 108 years, whatever it was, and so – I think it's just like a, a a vibe of just like, man, like, how did we get here? And like, this happened so fast. And, you know, where are we going to go next? And so, because um, like, wherever they go next, whether it's, I mean, they might, I mean, they might rebuild the Pac-12. I mean, I don't, we, we might be speaking too soon here, but if they don't do that, they got to join, I mean, probably the Mountain West. And if they do that, you're looking at a, a difference, at least in like conference, you know, distribution of like tens of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. which obviously affects facilities, the amount of people you can hire, all the different parts of the athletic department. And so like in that way, it's a pretty sad thing because you're looking at tons of losses of jobs, total loss of um, you, you just can't invest in the program, you know, that the way you could um, at a power conference level. And so so, yeah, I, I, you know, it definitely a, a, a mix of sadness and anger but also like when they play these guys like wisconsin coming up they see it as a chance to be like hey you know not only can we you know can we win this game but by winning this game we show people like hey like we belong in a power conference now are they is that gonna you know are they going to i mean i don't know but i think like as far as the fans and team is concerned it's it's a chance for them to show like hey you know you know we belong on the stage um so yeah, I think it's kind of all those things, all of those three things combined that go on, you know, different times. I, I just say too, as like as a fan of college football, I think it stinks. Like to, yeah. to see fan bases, I, I couldn't imagine what I'd feel like as a Wisconsin fan in those shoes. Um, two two more really quick questions on that, and you've already been really gracious with your time, which I really really do appreciate. Yeah. Uh, the first one is: is that rivalry dead? Are they going to find a way to keep playing the Apple Cup, or do you think it's over? Uh, I mean, if UW will not come to Pullman, it's over. <laughs> uh, because, uh, or I'm sorry, if they, um, they don't, yeah. So, like, I didn't want to just go to Seattle right. and just get you know, for a check, right? 
Um, so I think, yeah, if I, it has to be a non-conference thing. Um, but if they don't come to Pullman, then it's, I think they look at it as like a, this is not a feasible thing. Um, and, and even, I mean, Pat Chung, their idea has like said that publicly. He was like, yeah, I don't think it's even a smart idea for, uh, for us to keep this up if they're not going to come to Pullman. So, um, but yeah, pretty, pretty hazy to say the least. Um, but I can't imagine they're going to play that in Seattle anytime soon. Do you see uh, Washington State fans taking some vitriol out on the Badgers this weekend? Yeah, it, it's kind of an easy target to boo. Um, mm, I mean, I don't. Th- I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think they have any any like personal beef with Wisconsin. I mean, <laughs> I yeah. Uh, so Jake Dickard is like from Wisconsin. Um, you, you know, like I said, uh, Nikia Watson transferred from there a couple years ago. Um, I, I mean, as far as I know, there's no like. I know it's a Big Ten team, and you know, you know, kind of Big Ten posts and. Pac-12 teams, but um, but yeah, I don't think there's any like personal beef with Wisconsin going on. And then final question, kind of on that, and I could talk about this topic all day. I, I find just alignment in turn in, um, itself kind of fascinating. But it is there any type of worry that this, if if you do go to the Mountain West, like this is maybe the end of the program is is way too harsh, but the end of the ability to maybe compete at the Power Five level, just because of those financial differences. And then is it harder to keep coaches? Um, I'm just curious what your take is there. Yeah, there's a lot of ramifications for sure. And I I mean, I think it touches every kind of part of the athletic department. Like I said, you know, between facilities and, and uh, coaches and different, you know, all these different kind of money things. Um, but I also think that if you go to the Mountain West, obviously you leave a power conference. Um it's almost easier for Wazoo to like compete for like a playoff spot in that way, because now like they're not going to reach the, like, at, like this year, it would be exceedingly hard for them to reach the playoff if they don't win the Pac-12. Like that's impossible. But if they go to the Mountain West, let's say they, they win the Mountain West, all of a sudden you have eight teams in that because that's what you going to eight teams. So now you don't have to win the Pac-12 to get into the playoff. And obviously all the money that you get from being in the playoff and all that revenue. So I think like in a weird way, if they do join the Mountain West, obviously that's a big, big, you know, financial difference in terms of the conference, you know, distribution funds. But in terms of competing at the level that they want to, they can still do that. Obviously you're going to be playing a little, you know, lesser competition, but if it's about like, you know, winning championships and, you know, getting on that national stage, it almost becomes like easier for them in that way. So it's kind of a funny thing, but I think it, it could work out that way. No, it's not a terrible take. I mean, Cincinnati yeah. went to the playoffs, right? Coming out of the, a non-Power 5 conference, and they use yeah. a similar roadmap. Um, easier, a little easier schedule, and you go undefeated. And um, oh, I like it. That's, that's a good take. All right, two last questions to wrap up here. Badger fans yeah. coming out. Where's a place they should target for some food? Let, let's end on a happier note. Where, okay. where, where's a good place for them to target for some food here? Uh, well, so if you're feeling like some pizza, I have to recommend Sella's. Sella's is, I don't want to like, so like I went there for the first time like a few weeks ago and I got my pizza and I'm like, okay, where's all the toppings? But they like, they like layer the toppings inside of the pizza yes. and it's just like, it's unreal. So Sella's for sure. Um, as far as like bars, there's like, uh, my office is the big one. Uh, there's also some like college bars like the Coog. And uh, Valhalla are two uh, college bars. Um, but if you're not a student, like I'm not anymore, I think uh, the move is my office. And then food, you got Sellas, you got uh, the Lumber Yard. It's like, it's like a bar, different kind of restaurants in there. There's uh, Porchlight Pizza, also a good pizza spot. So, yeah, no shortage of uh, places to go to eat for sure. I love it. All right, and let's do um, predictions. How do you think this weekend's going to go? So I don't know if I have to stay consistent with this. Like, so for our, the, the paper, we did like a, like a preview section that ran the other day. And in there I have Wisconsin winning 24, 21, I think is what it was. So I'm going to, I'm going to stick to that. Cause I really do believe that. I think like, it's just going to be tough and then to contain two, you know, running backs of that caliber and between um, kind of a thinner linebacking uh, core, you know, between the, the, uh, you know, two guys I mentioned and then like, their third option is like a redshirt freshman, uh, Buddha Alukta. Um, and then like I said, like these, these guys, these guys are all plenty talented, but it's just like a different beast, you know, talking about these two running backs. And so I think that will end up being the difference in the game. 
Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Wisconsin in this one, 24, 21. Close game though. Um, let's yeah. wrap up here. Greg, thank you a so much for your time. And where can people find, uh, especially with this week coming up, your stories, your coverage of what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, spokesman.com is where all of our, uh, stories will be. Like I said, I mean, my Twitter is right here on the screen, but yeah, at Greg W Woods, I'm, you know, all my stuff will be on there. And, uh, yeah, those are the uh, two places where you can find all my stuff. I love it. Greg, thank you so much for the time. Uh, for everyone watching the show on Wisconsin, uh, Greg, you don't need to jump jump in on that one, the on Wisconsin. But for everyone watching our show on Wisconsin, looking forward to a really good weekend, and uh, we'll talk tomorrow.